So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. Okay. Well, listen here. Hello, and welcome to 90 Day Fiance K. I'm Mr. O, and today, Miss H and I will be discussing Season 4, Episode 11 of The Other Way. In this episode, Gabriel's paperwork catches up to him, Debbie meets Osama's family, Chris is still in Alabama not talking to Jamie, Jen's friends come to India and don't buy Rishi's new excuse, and Danielle throws a surprise party for Johan. As always, we'll end with our Students of the Week, Class Dunces, and Life Lessons. If you also watch Love After Lockup, you should listen to our other channel, Love After Lockup MK, where we're covering the current season of Life After Lockup. All right, thanks for listening. Stay safe and enjoy. Hello, Miss Gro. Hello, Miss H. How are you today? I'm not doing too bad. Um, you know, we're in the thick of all our spring season. I was doing better, but then I don't know. The pollen kicked up in the evening, and I've been scratching my eye all all, all night. So. It's starting to get just the slightest bit warmer here. Could almost taste that springtime. <laughs> late, it's late spring for us. Bouncing, hot, bouncing hot and cold for us now. That t- that part of spring. Well, it's warm everywhere else in the ninety day world. So yeah. uh, let's move to a place where it's probably very hot, uh, and that's Morocco. So uh, let's go to Debbie and Osama. Uh, They're trying to load the car with all of her luggage to start their journey to his parents' house in Chemiset. Osama tells her just to be herself and everyone will love her. Debbie is very nervous to meet his parents because she fears their judgment because of their age difference. She's afraid that they'll think of her as a terrible American trying to steal their son away. Osama tells her that his mom is really shy, so not to take that like she doesn't like her. Osama says his parents want what's best for him. Osama is also worried that they will not accept Debbie, but not because of her age, but because she's American. Debbie asks if his parents know she is moving there permanently, and Osama tells her that he will leave it up to her to tell them. Debbie is frustrated and feels like Osama doesn't really have her back. She tells him that she's going to wait to tell them. Debbie feels like this is a warning sign, and he's not being upfront with her. Osama encourages her to smile as she enters the house. Fatima, Osama's mom, is preparing tea, and the whole family, including Father Mohammed and Sister Asma, are there waiting to meet them. Debbie feels like they're being welcomed, and she is somewhat surprised. Asma says that they are nervous, too, and Debbie is impressed with Mohammed's tea pouring and kind of implies that maybe she's into dad and wants Osama to be like him. Mm. Debbie is trying to reassure the family that she has good intentions. She asks if Osama is unusual or strange, and they don't really say anything. So Debbie then just addresses the elephant in the room and says that age doesn't matter for them because they connect through art and poetry. She then asks about the age difference, and Mohammed says as long as they love each other, it's okay. Debbie can't seem to get off this age thing, and she keeps on, you know, asking them questions about it. And she's somewhat relieved to find that Mohammed is actually a year older than her, so therefore it kind of makes things okay. So, uh, what do you think is a better situation? I mean, uh, you know, creating Debbie, creating like is she just better like she asked them once just to let it go. Or is it better just to hash it out and put it out there like it seems her strategy is? I mean, I, I I would kind of be like, hey, you know, the kind of the elephant in the room is the age thing. Is that something that like it, it bothers you at all? And then, you know, go from go from there. I don't know that I'd ever do anything that Debbie does um, <laughs> yeah. in terms of like because she always makes it like just weirdly – Awkward, like because the the, one, the other thing that struck me is she was like, "Does Mah- y'all ever think Muhammad is, is strange? Does anybody think he's just <laughs> weird?" And they're all like, "Compared to you, no, right? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like uh, it depends on what your definition of strange is. You very, very strange lady who's sitting in my living yeah. room. Like, well, it's kind." almost like deprecating in a way right because it's almost like yeah he's got to be strange to be dating someone like me 
you know? And it's obvious that she's not comfortable with the age difference or she's insecure sure. about it. But right. it's at the same time, it's like, I don't know what more reassurance she wants. The parents already said that it's love that matters to them and that they mm -hmm. weren't bothered by it. I would say call it a win and move oh, on. Oh, yeah. Just though. No, yeah. That's just if they're not going to actually confront you about it, even if you think that behind closed doors, they really have issues with it. Nah, that's we're we're. We're at a, we're at a, we're definitely swimming with our head above water once they once yeah. they said like we care about love and they you know if it's okay with him it's okay with other okay fantastic we got it then Great. there's no we need to keep on. going yeah but I mean I think she I think she just did because it was like it was really hard for anybody to carry on a conversation it was just kind of like it, 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 she's just used to places that are have a little bit different of a especially as as like the obvious southerner she is right a different mm -hmm. definition of hospitality. Right. Where it's like it's rude to kind of keep your guests as the one who have to keep talking and keep the conversation going. Then and she was like, well, I guess we'll talk about my age again. <laughs> like this is awkwardly <laughs> silent. We have to talk about something. And all I know is our age difference. So yeah. I guess that's what we'll talk about. I mean, I, I don't think Osama is doing the best job of like uh, acting like the interpreter between mm -hmm. all parties. So it's like, well, I feel like we need the translation egg at minimum in this situation because yes. otherwise it is yes. going to be awkward silence because you can't speak to them directly. And it seemed like it was when he did translate because he didn't translate everything. It was kind of like an afterthought, like, oh, you're waiting for a response. I guess that means I have to translate now. Yes. I mean, yeah, that that's probably true. That's probably true. It is really hard to be like, that person made a bunch of noises that I don't recognize, and I'm going to sit mm -hmm. here and nod my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, it 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 does seem. I agree with you. It does seem strange that she seems the one person that's most bothered by the age difference. Everybody else is just like, all right, whatever. But I think it might be because they've already been like, "Yep, son's a weirdo." Like. Not going to do anything about it. Weird things are right. going to happen. This is just one of them. Like, Yeah, which is why I feel like she was asking if he was a weirdo because it's like, this is not yeah. a normal situation. And I feel like she's just trying to make light of the fact that it's not a typical situation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It, it, we'll see. It was That was kind of a... I feel like a little bit of a letdown of a scene. Like I thought we would get some sparks between this yeah. Southern Belle and these things that we got. We got, we got really nothing. So right. Well, okay. What about Osama leaving it up to Debbie to break it to his parents that she's that's moving weird. there permanently? I mean, that's okay. That's weird. It, it's it's weird that it got broken to them that point at all. That is like. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've decided this person lives here now. It's like. Like, that's your decision to make? Like, I wasn't like, this is weird. I mean, I mean you know, it's like, it, it, it's just, it's whoever said it, it was going to be weird, right? Because it's like, well, this feels like information we should have had earlier. Like, Yeah, to put it on her, I felt like was pretty messed up, though. And he just said it like nonchalantly. If he was going to put it on himself, he would have done it months ago, though. Oh, yeah. Well... That is, if he actually has true intentions. I don't know if he really does. Right. Like, it's hard yeah. to say at this point. Because at the very beginning, he's like, yeah, and you'll go back in like three months. What do you mean I'm going back in three? This is right. a trial run, right? So it's like that in itself is a big red flag of, I don't know if this guy is super committed. So if he's viewing this as a trial run, why would he tell his parents, oh, yeah, this woman, we're getting married and she's living here permanently? Because that might not be the case the way he sees it. Yeah. I mean, but I guess it's true. I guess it, and, and if he's also kind of in the thought process of being like, you were the one who decided you wanted to move here permanently. So yeah, you tell I them. I guess that's your news. You tell them. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to somebody who definitely was not there um, so permanently. And that's with Chris and Jamie. Oh, gosh. So we start off in Alabama because that's where Chris is. And she's FaceTiming Jamie on the computer. So she says she needed to take care of some bank stuff and take care of her um, narcolepsy medication, which mm, we talked about last time should only have taken a few days. But here we are now and we learn that Jamie has COVID again. Which is scary because the first time she had it, it had, or at least the last time she had it, she had terrible complications, was hospitalized and everything like that. So Jamie in the um, 
in the on the FaceTime is saying that the hardest part about this whole situation is being alone, which kind of leads us to she's alone and us learning to that now we're finally seeing Alabama, but it's three months after she left, oh after Chris left. So she said first the trip got extended for medical reasons, then because there was some sort of weird miscalculation and they're broke and Jamie, and Chris has to earn money for the two of them and she can't work in Columbia. So she says that Jamie quit her job and then said she was going to go find another one, but never did. So the only option is for Chris to work and she can only do that in the States. So they start to get into it on the computer. Jamie says that, you know, um, oh, you just think that money is more important than I am. And Chris is like, how could that be true? I send you all of my money. <laughs> um, and it, it it goes back and forth a lot. Jamie says the worst part is that these whole three months, Chris has only called her three times, even though Jamie almost every day is just like gives her a message that says, call me when you can. So in an interview, Chris says they at first they talked all the time, but then the talking turned into fighting. And now she's working so many odd jobs at so many odd hours that she really just can't be there to talk when Jamie wants to talk. So Jamie says it's the first time that they, she's seen her even on screen in a month. But Chris says she's not going to want to talk to talk at all if every time they talk, they just have the same fight and Jamie gets mad. So Jamie says she's not sure that Chris even loves her and doesn't feel like she has a wife. So Chris thinks that everything she does is never enough. And then she gets up without even ending the call. She just leaves her hanging there on the computer screen. And the producers are like, uh... We think she's I don't, coming back. I don't know if she's coming back. <laughs> uh, she just like walked over there. You can wait if you want. And then we kind of get a little bit of Jamie's side of the story. So she understands that she just says she understands that we need the money, but she's more upset. Not that Chris isn't there at all, like literally in Columbia, but that she doesn't seem really interested in communicating. So it, because it's lack of communication, she thinks that she doesn't think Chris ever. She might think that Chris might not ever intend on coming back. So Chris seems to think now that the only options in this relationship are either go back to Columbia and be poor, live in the street, or stay and have a wife that's mad at her all the time. All right. So we had this definite disagreement, and this is one that I was interested to hear your take because I could kind of get a little bit of both sides of this argument. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was wondering who who you – whose side were you on more? Jamie. 100% Jamie. Um, I understand what uh, Chris is saying. Um, I understand, like, the things that make it difficult. But, I mean, and we say this all the time, like, you know, how difficult is it just to send a message, uh, you know, like, in between something to say, like, oh, hey, love you, thinking about you, Mm -hmm. right? And it's like those little assurances really help someone who needs more of that kind of quality time, right? They want to know that the other person is thinking about them. And I get it. If that's not Chris's style, that's not Chris's style. But you have to, at this point, understand that this is your partner's style. And so in order to make your partner happy, you got to remember at least daily, like a good morning, hope you you have a great day or good night. I hope you had a great day. Love you. You know, it's like you if you don't contact a person ever, it's very easy to feel like that person is never thinking about you and they're married. That should not be the case. Right. It's not even never thinking about you. It's like I'm I don't know. To me, it's like I'm not a part of your life. Right. Mm -hmm. And I get what I get what Chris is saying, too, in that like, yeah, she works jobs and she works things where her phone isn't with her. Right. Right. Sure. But she gets back to the phone at some point. And like, also, I feel like it's, you know, okay, I'm okay. Love you, babe. I'm about to go out to this job. I'm going to leave my phone in the car. I'll be away from it for a few hours. Like, right. How hard is that? It's not difficult. I mean, I don't think I don't think that what Jamie's asking for is hours and hours of phone time daily. Right. Right. I mean, she's even said, I haven't even seen your face in a month. That's extreme. Right. That They're supposed extreme. to be married. That is extreme. So it's like, obviously, there's a middle ground in there. Yeah. I mean, that and that's part. That's the part that got me is like at the end when Chris was like, oh, so I guess either I go poor or I just have a uh, miserable wife and a miserable life and stay here and make the money. And I was there's like, middle there's other options there. Like, because <laughs> right. she also legitimately did not seem to get what what Chris does. She was like, everything I do is not enough for you. And she was like. You're not doing that much for me. <laughs> like, well, like, yeah. 
I do feel like there's resentment there too. Um, like uh, for different reasons. Like I'm sure because it, it, it kind of came out this way that Chris is resentful of the fact that she has to be the one to work. Right. Oh, and yes. that I mean, that's 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 what part I was on Chris's side for is like, right. If she said she said, I'm going to quit my job and look for a new one. I could be like, all right, you're not happy in that job. That's great. And then it's been at least three months later and she mm-hmm. hasn't looked for another job. Oh, yeah. That's an issue. Yeah. So she's resentful that she's the one having to work and that Jamie's resentful of she's feeling neglected, you know, mm-hmm. and I feel like this is such a like a cliche, like a very common argument between partners you know about one person being like the breadwinner and not being able to emotionally be there because they're putting all their efforts and energy into their work professional life and then the other person who's like neglected but then you know the other person's like well i'm providing you money and well you're not there for me emotionally yeah how am I, this is the only thing I, but the other thing too is i could totally see chris at the end of this conversation be like well god i guess i have to get another job then because that's, I guess, what she wants. That's what I have to do to keep right. her happy, right? And it's yeah. like, that's literally the opposite of what she's asking for. <laughs> and she sees that as the only solution. Yeah, I feel like Chris is not very good at conflict management at all. Because no. it just, it seems like she's running away from, like, just contact with Jamie, which is making things worse. Like, even, like, it sounded like Chris was avoiding making calls because they were fighting all the time. Well, you know what's going to make you fight even more the next time you, like, talk to that person? is the fact that you've been so long without talking to that person. Right. Yeah. And they want to talk about why we haven't talked. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that... I mean, because we don't see what we didn't see what else the fights were, but yes, it seems like I mean it's a hundred percent. And and I wish Chris would kind of own up to that. Like I, yeah, I avoid talking to her. I like yeah. take it out of my time to do it. And like, and she does kind of try to make Jamie feel nuts for thinking that. Yeah, right. She's like, I feel like you're avoided in talking to me because you know you w- want to avoid the conflict. And she's just like, I have no time to talk to you. What do you want me to just drop everything? Whatever. I'm like, and then you know what I'm saying. Chris always jumps to something that Jamie didn't say. Right, right. Right. right? She, like Jamie literally said, hey, I always send you a message that says, call me when you have a chance. And then five days will go by and you won't call. Right. And yeah. it'll be like, I know you had a chance at some point in there. Right. right? To give me a call. I it, I knew it wasn't going to be right now. And then Chris's response to that is, what, do you just want me to drop everything in the middle of work and just call you and, every, and talk to you for hours whenever you want to do it? And it's like, that's literally not what she said. She did yeah. not even imply that that's what you should do. Right, right. So I'm I'm team Jamie on this one. I think that, you know, we can certainly see that this is the type of person that ghosted Jamie. Like, you know, it's like that yeah. comes as no surprise after kind of seeing how this is played out the way that it has. The thing mm-hmm. that confuses me is why on earth did she get married to her? <sighs> I mean, that's the other thing, too, is I don't know. I'm I'm very confused how she's like, ooh, we made a little mistake in our budgeting and now we're broke. Like, I don't understand how you went from, oh, we can make it for years until I can get a work permit or, right. you know, a year and a half, two years till I can get a work permit to all of a sudden being like, oh, yeah, it's been two months. It's been like, what? nine uh, uh two weeks a month later right. and we're broke we're completely broke like how did you miscalculate that bad <laughs> i definitely call shenanigans on that because she was ready to invest twenty thousand dollars on a food truck so i mean that would at least imply that they've got tens of thousands of dollars yeah at that's least true. yeah that's true so- which i mean which I mean, I have the same thing, and it doesn't get me that far here, but their rent is much mm. lower, right? Everything's everything's cheaper there, it seems like. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely seems suspicious, but part of that, at the time, Jamie had a job, right? And that was part of the calculations. Yeah. Well, yeah. Still team Jamie on this one. All right. Uh, let's move on to maybe another couple that didn't quite plan so well, uh, and that's Gabriel and Isabel. Gabriel and Isabel have told her parents that they're engaged, and her parents were super happy for them. They thought it was a bit fast, but they were overall pretty supportive. 
So Gabriel and Isabel are off to see a lawyer because Gabriel has a month left on his visa. If they don't get this taken care of by then, he will have to wait six months until the next calendar year before he can come back. They are talking about, you know, having to rush a wedding uh, because they'll have to get married within that month. And uh, Isabel still wants something nice and special, and she would like to have it at the beach. She's never been married before, so she does want something romantic. They ask the lawyer what kind of documents they're going to need, and the lawyer says as long as they have all the documentation, they'll be able to get the visa in seven days. Gabriel is worried about the conflicting information of his stated gender since his passport and his Florida ID do not match the birth certificate. The lawyer doesn't think that it will be an issue if he can get the paperwork to support the transition, but Gabriel thinks it might take months. He says that when he sent uh, his transition papers in to get his passport changed, they kept his evidence and documentation of his transition and never sent it back. Gabriel will have to go back to the U.S. to get the documentation taken care of, which is disappointing to Isabel since she feels like he just got there. After the meeting, Isabel tells Gabe that she thought that this whole process would be a lot easier. She asks how long he will be in Miami, and Gabriel says, well, until he has his document. Isabel is frustrated and upset, and she just wants to go home and rest. She's actually pretty annoyed that Gabriel has never tried to get a birth certificate before and that it never occurred to him that he would need it since he had a passport. And how could you predict this type of scenario? Gabriel is packing up to go to Miami and Isabel is sad that he is leaving. She's annoyed at his negligence. Gabriel says that he will also have to tell his mom and sister about the engagement when he's there. He's avoided telling them so far because they have had doubts about their relationship. Isabel has met his family through video call briefly, and she wonders if the family doesn't love her. Gabriel is worried that they might be separated for months because they might not let him back in the country if his documentation takes too long to get. All right, so do you think this is something that Gabriel should have figured out before? Or is this something that's like an honest mistake, as Gabriel is saying? I, I think it's... I think it's an honest mistake um, because I, at least in my, whatever, from what I've said, he got his passport, mm-hmm. right? And I could see the birth certificate being something that kind of sits on your to, to-do list and yeah. not something you're going to like, you know, worry about getting right away. Because in the States, usually if you have, I feel like how many times have you gone to something that's like, we need a birth certificate and a blah, 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 well, blah, 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 and blah, 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 or a birth passport. Certificate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, I and get it. He has a birth certificate. Yeah, yeah. He has a birth certificate, but I don't think it occurred to him, oh, this is a problem because they don't completely match. Right. And sometimes, yeah. yes. I and and as somebody who has punctuation in his name, <laughs> um, oh, like I can tell you, getting government documents to perfectly match sure. is sometimes a struggle. Um, and so yeah. I'm definitely more literally, like aware of the things that don't perfectly match. But I feel like if the name and the SSN and the birth date match and the passport has it, I, I would see why it wouldn't be something you'd think of, oh, if I didn't get this changed. Now, I don't know. Did she just just did she just want him to you should have gotten your I wish you would have gotten your birth certificate done before or because the other thing, too, is like she's mad that he doesn't have the documentation back, which is always something that scares the crap out of me when I, I have to know, get a passport. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just sending this stuff that cannot be replaced through the mail. Like, I do not like this. This is I, bad. Yeah. I don't like that either. But, uh, I mean, I guess the only thing I've really ever sent is the current passport, right? And well, well, no, well, no. The first time you get it, you have to send the birth certificate. Your birth certificate. I don't think I ever had to do that, and it's probably because my parents got me a passport, and I've never had it lapse. So I'm sure okay. the first time, and that was like back in the day where you couldn't just mail things in; you had to make an appointment at one of the passport offices. And so I remember having to drive like to the courthouse in the county over kind of situation to like get passports done. Oh, we just got passports done for my daughters um, mm-hmm. and we had still went – we did it. We still went to the – they have a passport office in our library. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they still had to send them away and like we, they – but the, the lady at the passport office put everything in, made sure it was in order. It was like this just has to get processed now. Um, yeah. That's crazy. But yeah, but I, I'm always afraid that things aren't going to come back. And Yeah. But now when I looked at it though, you know, I did like look into Florida. Apparently, 
he literally just needs a letter from his doctor and he has to take it down to the um, like if he, especially if he has his passport mm-hmm. and he has a letter from the doctor. So he has to obtain a letter, for, another letter from the doctor, which mm-hmm. it's a letter he already got because that's how the passport got changed. Yeah. Yeah. And then they just reissue a birth certificate, right? Yes. I, I, my I guess is it would take – I don't know how long it would take to get sent, but he could then come back to Columbia. He could say send it to this address, oh, right, when it's, when it's if done, they do if that. they need to send it. Well, I mean, does they make him come back down and get it? Well, that's the other thing too, though, um, is I feel that he – I don't think they'd ship international just because of the – they wouldn't want to deal with those shipping costs. But the yeah, problem yeah, yeah. is is that if he goes back to Colombia, he still can't marry her without that document. And so now he's in the country illegally because his visa is run out because he only has it right. until the end of the month. So it doesn't really matter where he waits – it's still a problem, the fact that it's the length of time it takes for him to get the document because he can't get married to legally stay in the country. Yeah, uh, that's true. I just I, I just don't know that it's something that would take – why would it take more than 15 minutes Why does minutes anything to take out? that long, right? Why does it take I don't six know. months to get a passport? Who knows? I don't know. It, 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 to me, because the other thing too is this is like life and birth records. Because like, I do know that a marriage license takes like 15 minutes to get, right? And And – after the waiting period, it's like 15 minutes and then they do, for at least depending on the state, uh, at least here, it's like uh, you just give them literally, here's my passport, here's my divorce decree, whatever. And then they go, okay, all right, you're good to go. It's printed. You can come get it in 48 hours because you have to wait. Um, to co- It's yeah. like the cool off period, right? Oh, okay. Um, and, but other than that, it doesn't take any time. Like why would it mm-hmm. take any time for them to go like, oh, I see you're here in the system click can i print out another one for you like it should take that amount of time right i don't know it is it is something that's always good but i feel like i if even my kids were born i had it within two weeks Uh, yeah i don't know like i said why does anything take as long as it does but it does right and and i get that a lot of times that they just pad the time because it's like they don't want you to harass them and, you know, if for some mm-hmm. reason something because, you know, they always say, oh, you'll get your license in four to six weeks or something like that. And like, I think I got my license within three days of me getting my picture done this last time. So it was like, you know, and I know. Oh, it's a wait, 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 hold on. You have to send away for your license? Uh, No, uh, but when you get it renewed, you can usually renew it online. And from the time that you pay I don't know if you have to pay for renewal, whatever you do to renew. They usually say, okay. oh, you got to wait four to six weeks for you to get your license, okay. like, del- okay, yeah, you know, sent to you. Online yeah. renewal. I was like, I was like, because when I get it, but uh, cause I my picture taken, because my picture on my license right now is super old. Because mm-hmm. uh, I got like, like the last time I did an online renewal, they're just like, well, here's your old picture. And I was like, yeah. all right, well, that means when this expires, this is going to be like me a decade ago. But OK. <laughs> Oh, I had a really old picture for a really long time. They didn't make me change my picture for a really long time. So I'm pretty sure my picture now will probably be good for a couple decades. <laughs> That's – it's so weird. But yes, <laughs> but if I get it – if I go to the the MVA, right, which is what we call the DMV, if yeah. I go to the MVA – they print it right there, and oh, I leave yeah, no, with my license. No, that does not happen in California. You got to wait to get it in the mail. So four to six weeks, that's when you get in the mail. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I just wait. I go wait in the little pen over there, and then they call my name and hand me my license. Nice. Like, that's what happened when I was 16. Yeah. I think things might be a little different now because we have kiosks. So it seems oh, like sure. a kiosk has the ability to print it out, if, especially if they're using an old – license picture that they already have on now, file. Now, to be fair, I don't know if that's still true in the area, in the age of real ID. Oh, that's true. I could see that. Because I've only gotten the real ID through the, the getting it renewed online or whatever. Yeah. So, hmm. Okay. All right. So, next up, let's go to... Oh, I have Jen and Rishi. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of Jen and Rishi in this episode. Yeah. No... Other people, but Jen and Rishi. So we're still in the spa, wrapped in the towels, and like actually hearing a lot of the conversation that we heard last time when uh, Jen confronted him about the DMs and the shirtless pics and things like that. So now Rishi thinks he has a new plan. He abandoned uh, whatever it was before playing dumb, and his new plan is, oh, I knew that was your friend the whole time. I was just pulling her leg <laughs> just and playing pranking. along. Uh, yeah. His, so, yes, the new excuse is it was just a prank, bro. 
<laughs> All right. So Jen isn't buying it and just wants them to come clean. So she plays along with, with his excuses and says, okay, so you knew it was my friend. So why, you know, did you like just block her and end it and like do anything and not be like, ha ha, not like, it's not a joke. The prank isn't a prank until you let people know it was a prank and you never yeah. did that part. So that's not really what it is. Um so anyway, she adds – she says it adds an extra layer of suspiciousness because he blocked her instead of ghosting her. Blocked her and then deleted all the messages we heard later. So he tells us in an interview that he blocked her because she was getting too pushy and too inappropriate. So he gives kind of a half-smiling apology to her and basically goes into like, well, what do you want me to say mode? And then he offers to let so – you, do you want to see my phone? And so she says, sure, go get your phone. And she scrolls through it for a while and doesn't really find anything incriminating. So this wasn't the only thing giving her doubts. Um, The other thing, you know, other things around here still like, you know, making her feel bad, like how he still hasn't told his family, which he insists he's not putting that off. I'm not just blocking it and putting it off, which leads to a flashback to him in at least five different scenes (laughs) saying the saying the phrase, I just need a little more time. Yeah. Um, So he pulls out the big guns now and says, well, no, 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 you know, whatever my family. I have the astrologer tell me the date and time that I must tell them. So things are moving forward. Of course, that date and time is two months from now. So she's not really happy about that. (laughs) Um, But he says it's the best time because the planet exchanges and so forth. So he doesn't think that it's – he doesn't think that, you know, two more months, whatever. You've been waiting for three years. What's two more months? But she is just like, yeah, she's pretty suspicious and – Let's uh, let's face it, probably going to get more suspicious because her friends Randy and Myra are coming to visit her in India. This is a visit that has already been planned. It's not like an emergency gather the gather the girls thing. So she's excited for them to get here and uh, excited that she's already talked to Rishi about the pictures now. So she'll like have new things to talk to them about. So they can't just and they also can't just bug her, spend the whole time being like, you really need to tell him. You really need to tell him. You really should confront him. So she also uh You know, so they finally get there. They've been traveling for three days and it's the first time they've traveled this far since Jen's first wedding in Jamaica to a mother man that they both hated. So she gets to the bus station and they all hug and greet each other before getting in the cab and leaving. And it's one of those like golf cart looking cabs um, and the whole street in the cab with the traffic and the honking and the people puking out of buses is really a lot for the friends. Um, So they – do seem to be into the apartment that she has now because there's space and burglar bars. Although, yeah, they think the bathroom is like glamping because <laughs> it doesn't it I, I, because it doesn't have a separate shower. I guess it's you know one of those setups where the, basically the whole bathroom is shower floor, so you can just turn the shower on and use the bathroom. And then it has the you know sink sprayer thing to use as a bidet. And it's like this is like camping. I'm like I don't. <laughs> know what you're doing um but anyway they again they go to the rooftop direct for drinks to start to have their whole conversation so she tells them that she hasn't had sex with rishi since she's come back and she won't until they get married and that can't happen at least for two until at least for two months when he tells his family so they can't believe that they're like what no that's not a thing there's <laughs> no way he's just not having sex with you he's clearly having sex with someone else um so randy brings up The DMs and the pics, you know, he was trying to do it with me and they don't buy his excuse about like it being a prank either. So you seem to think that altogether, yeah, clearly proof positive. We have, you know, determined he is cheating on you. Uh, You should break up with him. And they say it's their their mission to open her eyes to Rishi's BS. So the next day they actually get to meet Rishi. So he wants everything to everyone to like each other, but is not sure – Jen just is not sure that her friends are going to like Rishi because they already clearly don't. Yeah. So he's nervous because he knows it's important to make a good impression. But they will also have lots of questions about this social media situation. So we sit down and Rishi, Rishi orders for the table in Hindi. So during the, then during the ensuing conversation, he brings up a DM situation. I think he brought it up to get ahead of it. And he tries to sell his story that he knew what – you know, who knew who it was the whole time. It was just playing along to pull her leg. But she thinks that – you know, again, like Jen, if that was the true, that would have ended with you calling me out, you know, saying, ha ha, gotcha. 
and not just blocking me and deleting the chat history. So he says he always blocks and deletes the chat history when things start to get inappropriate from the other person's end and then shows everyone the block list that he has on Instagram. See, look at all the people I've done that to. So it doesn't totally make things right with Jen, but she kind of likes his block list. (laughs) So they all they all keep poking at the sore spot about if he's going to ask his family if they would even accept Jen as his wife when when they when he does end up telling them. So they also want to know if his family is actively trying to find him a wife. And then we get another one of those situations like Chris and Jamie where people are not really having the same conversation with each other. Yeah. Because, you know, they seem to be concerned that the parents are even looking. But he thinks it's not a big deal because he just dismisses it all the time and says, no, get that away from me. I don't care. Right. So – so to him, it's not a big deal. They showed me, shoved some photos in front of my face. I said no. And Jen is like, but your family's trying to marry you off. This clearly is a big deal. Um, and so she gets really upset about it and leaves. And then the foods are, the friends are there. And he's just like, so is the food spicy? And <laughs> as they kind of like stare at him. So man, that, this, this to me was a tough one because I don't like the friends. Yes, you're right. I don't like the friends, but also but Rishi is clearly full of shit. Right. <laughs> like, His story is so flimsy. It's like yes. your just pranking excuse is stupid, especially the yep. way it completely went down. It's like, I don't think you knew it was the friend because you wouldn't have blocked Absolutely her in the not. end. You would have been like, oh, ha ha, I know you. And then also, do we know if she like completely catfished him or she messaged him with her actual real account. I think she messaged him with her real account, which means that they need to stop using the word catfish because that yes. is not what a right. catfish exactly. is. Catfish is you using completely different pictures and pretending to be someone else. So it was it really obvious that she was friends with Jen? Because what I could see happening is that Rishi saw that it was Randy and that it was uh, that she was friends with Jen and maybe figured out the honey trap. Oh, right? one, one mutual contact. Like, oh, OK. Like, <laughs> right. that. yeah, sure. Figured out the honey trap and then decided to block her then. I could see that. But that's mm-hmm. not a just pranking situation like he's trying to, you know, tell this story. It's no, clearly that's a not. panics like, ah, crap, it went too far. Yes. <laughs> Bad choice. Right. Because it didn't sound like she was going too far. She was just trying to meet up with him. That's not inappropriate. Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, unless that's where he considers it inappropriate. Oh, we can flirt and do stuff online. But when she's really trying to make something happen on person, like, nope, nope, that's well, gone too far. Okay. Which is also ridiculous because he's the one who messaged her and was like, you didn't call. You didn't call me. Yep. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But it just it, it just it just doesn't hold water. It no, doesn't make any sense at all. Doesn't. Because the other thing – because the other thing that would have gone with it is when she said, oh, do you get any messages from girls? He would have been like, yeah, like your friend tried to hit me up. <laughs> like, yes. Perfect he would have said it like that. for him to say something. Yeah. So his reasoning doesn't seem valid. Uh, but yeah, you're right. The friends aren't super likable. And I was trying to figure out exactly why. Well, one, they're super like suspicious. And then also just – She's got that like default like bitch face, right? She does. Where she, she looks really does. like yeah. she's angry all, always, all the time. Like, pursed she's lips, already mad at you, yeah. Like, you know, slanted eyebrows, like like almost mm-hmm. in like scowling mode all the time. And so it's just easy to not like just like them just based on how they're coming across, right? But then you're For absolutely sure. right in that Rishi ain't right. Like, what he's no. saying ain't right. No, it's not right. It's it's totally off. And I don't know if if he's cheating on you because the other friend brings up one of, like, you know, my pet peeve, my 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 thing as a man is, right. like, there's two things as, as a man that I'm offended when people think of men. One, we can't not have sex. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> she's like, well, if he's not getting it from you, he's getting it from somebody. And he's like, that's – no, like, that – it is K because it goes along with the other one. And that's the like – and that's more than the – I've heard it called the myth of the uncontrollable boner. And it's just like, <laughs> well, 
I had no choice. What was I supposed to do? We we just had to sleep with her. And it's like you. Yeah, we got a couple yeah. love after lockup people who would definitely yeah, just be in that people. camp. But it's like, yeah, just the idea that once a man gets turned on, oh, that he has no control Something's over his happen. actions at this point. Something yeah. has to happen. And it's like, right. no, I am in control of my body when I <laughs> even even if I'm feeling, you know, feeling turned on. It's OK. Like I can yeah. control myself. Yeah, and both yeah. of those implications are you, you know, men can't control themselves. And especially because that friend spe- like um, prefaced that with, well, as a married woman. I know <laughs> that this oh, is gosh. the way it works. I'm like, oh my well, God. I was going to say, he doesn't seem overly aggressive to begin with. You know, like he didn't right. seem like terribly disappointed that Jen was like, no sex before marriage, you know, and he didn't seem like he was going to be like, well, let's test out like your boundaries on this. Right. He just seemed mm-hmm. like whatever. He just doesn't seem like an overly aggressive guy. Well, right. And that's but that's the thing is that's the friend would have been like that's suspicious. On um, every other guy would have been like what? No. The only way is that he wouldn't even fight for it is if he was already getting it. It's just like oh my god. No, There's I don't not see every it that guy. way at all. I see it as no, like he's well, just well chill maybe about he's it. just yeah. He's like whatever. He gets it or he doesn't get it. Whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. for sure. For sure. Yeah. I don't know. It just it, everything is is. Ugh, I don't know. It, it, and also the friends were really judgmental about – and I know because we kind of know they're not well-traveled friends, right? Because they were yeah. like, this is the farthest I've been since I've been to the resort in Jamaica, right? <laughs> so – but man, they were like – that wasn't even a bad bathroom. But they were like, whoa, this oh, is no. really rough in it. <laughs> there are so much worse bathrooms in the world. Yeah. Uh, but that bus vomit thing, that's pretty disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give I them mean, that one. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's because it's exposed. I've definitely... Well, yeah, like, that It could have easily... He could have just projectile vomited on them. That yes, would have been concerning yes. to me as well. So, yeah, I get yes, it. Yes, for sure. For sure. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to our last couple of this episode, Danielle and Johan. It's the morning after the disagreement about Danielle's friend slash ex, but Johan is acting like nothing happened, even though he had originally said there would be consequences. Uh, It's Johan's birthday, so Danielle is doing a ritual, an Aoife ritual, to help bring peace into the home. She takes a coconut and rolls it in eggshells and kicks it around the house to give the cleansing aura. Danielle thinks that Aoife has helped improve her life. Johan asks her what she's doing, and he thinks that she's crazy. He asks to help even though he doesn't believe, but he wants to support her, and he also thinks it's funny and just wants to kick around a coconut. Yeah, Johan, think- <laughs> Johan thinks that he's been peaceful this last week. Uh, he prays out loud to make Danielle less stubborn and easy to get along with. After they kick it around, Danielle has to try and break the coconut, and Johan laughs at this whole process. It makes Danielle feel like the coconut ritual worked and that they're finally on the same page. Danielle is throwing Johan a surprise party for his birthday with his family, so she's off to get a cake. She's annoyed because the cake guy claims that there is no icing to decorate a cake, uh, so they won't do it, or she can't do it either. But after Danielle bothers him long enough, he finally gives her uh, some icing to decorate the cake herself. He offers her a job as soon as he sees that she's capable of piping words. Johan thinks that they're going to dinner, just the two of them, but Danielle has invited his whole family. Danielle asks what his perfect birthday would be, and he says hiking Mount Everest. Danielle hopes that he will see that he is the first priority when he sees the effort she puts into the party. He seems surprised and says that they overdid it. He didn't expect his whole family to be there. While the family is eating, Johan makes a speech to thank God for another year of life and for having a party so special with his family. His dad points out that he should thank his wife, And Johan says really flippantly that he already thanked her. So Danielle gets upset and walks out. Hmm. Danielle is upset that he ignored her in front of his family and didn't acknowledge that she's the one who put the party together. Johan eventually follows her and she says that he's just not grateful. Johan then says that she actually ruined his birthday since the day before they fought about her friend. And he is still upset about the Talon situation. Danielle cries and tells him that her life is for him, and he has some crazy ideas in his mind. 
he maintains that she's already ruined his birthday, so she says she's going to go. Danielle says she's been in this type of relationship before, and it didn't end well. So, Johan continues to have his birthday party without Danielle, who is driven back home, and Johan then kind of alludes that these were the consequences he was talking about the last time. <laughs> Which, I feel like oh it was just God. more of an afterthought, right? He's just like, oh, oh 100%. yeah, oh. Yeah. Yes, the consequences are when you throw me a surprise party, I will ignore <laughs> you in front of the family and flippantly dismiss your like that ah, was my plan. I had thought of that. Sure. Mm-hmm. I know he's he was using that as a back card. The next time she gets mad, I'll just be like, yes. these are Honestly, the consequences. Are the con- this is the consequences. <laughs> Whatever of what you, you did. got mad at me for. Although I do think it was a little bit more malicious than that. Right. Because he really just was like, I already thanked her. We clearly know that that's not true. That's not true. So why Uh did you lie to your whole family just to like. And the part I don't understand about that, about that, about that is like, why? (laughs) That to me, that just makes you look like an ass to your family. Yeah. Right. That's one of those things like that seems like you would go over the top like, oh, my God, my beautiful wife. Thank her so much. So her family was like, oh, yeah, he's a good guy. And then privately being like, what the shit? Like yeah. you ass, right? Because yeah, I don't want my family to think I'm an ungrateful asshole who doesn't even right. thank his wife. Oh yeah, thank you. Because it's one of those things. Yet, yeah, if I'm the dad, I was like, yeah, thanking her before isn't good enough. You have to thank him in front of everyone, right? To like actually demonstrate that you appreciate you. You, you just told all of us how much you appreciate us, and then completely yeah. ignored the person who put it all together. It kind of made it sound like he thanked God for the party. It's like okay. God didn't really, like, plan the specifics of the party. So right. that's interesting that you're thanking God, but then you can't thank your wife. And I feel like it took the same amount of energy and effort to say, I already thanked her, than it is to say, thank you. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Thank thank you, Danielle. Like, that's, yes. that's, that's it. That's all I had to do, right? Right. And she would have gotten up and walked away. But his thing was so, you ruined my birthday. Yeah. You ruined my birthday. Birthday? What are you, 11 years old? Are you 11-year-old right. girl talking about how you ruined my birthday because you asked me a question about something I didn't like the day before my birthday? Like, what? Mm. You, are you a child? I This is – that infuriated me. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, he definitely came off as really immature the last episode when he kind of threw a tantrum about this. I mean, quite honestly, like, I'm not saying that he's wrong to get mad. I think his reaction was, like, very immature. But quite honestly, she should have seen how upset it made him and pivoted from there, right? Instead of pushing it. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to be upset up over the situation, yeah. right? To throw your birthday into the mix <laughs> right. is like, who cares? Yeah. Like, it's irrelevant. Now, that wasn't to say that Danielle doesn't make me mad because she always does too yeah. with the stupid cake thing. Oh, uh, he knew I wasn't going to leave a store. He knew I wasn't going to leave a store until I got my cake. And I'd be like, oh, my God, you're lucky I didn't work there because I would make it my mission to be like, you are not leaving the store with a, with a cake with words on it. I yeah. will make sure of it. This store will close and I will lock you inside before you get <laughs> your goddamn cake. Like, especially the way she did. Oh, I always get what I want. And I'd be like, yeah. not for me. You won't. No. Oh, my <laughs> this, gosh. It ends here. I mean, I this is what I didn't understand. Okay, why couldn't she take the blank cake home and find icing on the way and pipe it herself? That's what I didn't understand. That's what I couldn't figure out either. I'm because my if I went to the store, right? Yeah, I would have been like, "Hey, can I get this?" Oh, it's too late. I was like, "Oh, it's too late. Can I just get a plain cake then?" Yeah, you can get a plain cake. Okay, I'll just get that. That would have been the entire conversation, right? And then I'd have figured out how to decorate the plain cake, right? Like it would never occur to me to. Bug the guy behind the counter. Like, this dude's just trying to do his job. Why am I making this dude's life hard, yeah. man? I couldn't even understand what was happening at first because I was like, wait, wait, wait. So you're trying to tell her that she can't have anything but a blank cake? Like, she can't go home and decorate it? Because that's what I thought she was trying to say. Like, so I can't decorate? And he was like, no. 
It's like, well, who are you to say that something on this cake can't, you know, you can't put something on this cake once she it leaves. She was asking to come behind the counter, use the store's material. I'm like, no, get out of here, lady. Oh go buy, gosh. go buy some icing at the supermarket and pipe it yourself. Yeah, th- I, that's what I didn't understand. I was just like, well, and quite honestly, she's like really into like fruit and stuff like that. She could have easily decorated it with like, well, it was kind of decorated before. I guess she just wanted it to have his name the, on it. Yeah, but decorations, and she's like, if I was in New York, I get his chest and blah blah, and it'd be a sheet cake with his picture. I was like, yeah, but you wouldn't get that at four p.m. the day before. Yeah, even in New true. York, you're not getting that. Yeah. Right. Because he was, he was he, I mean, I think he was getting to the point where he was trying to close up the store and was just like, can we just get, get can we just go out of here? Right. I just feel I feel bad when people abuse workers like that, because I absolutely consider that abuse of workers mm-hmm. like and that's total bullshit. And I, like I really judge people who don't treat working people well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. So moving on from all those infuriating people. um, no, nope, that was everybody, it. wasn't it? Yeah. That was that it. Was yeah, it. I was going to say, because uh, surprisingly, we don't have to talk about Nicole and Mahmoud today. Right. I was thinking like, oh, most infuriating, Nicole and Mahmoud. But uh, they were not in it. Uh, based on the preview, I don't know if we're going to see much more of them. I mean, they, I don't know how much more of a story we could have, but we also don't know how many more episodes there are because yeah. they were teasing all in the commercials, teasing this tell all coming up in May. So who knows what's going on? Right. And they had a lot of sneak peeks. And I kind of thought it was very odd their choice to do all that because it was almost like spoiler alert, right? They very much implied that uh, Debbie and Osama aren't together. They very mm-hmm. much implied that Chris and Jamie weren't together. They very much implied that Nicole... Well, I mean, we could have figured that out just based on how this was going. Nicole and Mahmoud yeah. weren't together, you know? So it's just like, you know, I know they are always trying to kind of keep that under wraps until, you know, the actual um, uh, season ends. Like, who's together, who's not? So it just seemed weird that they were airing that. Yeah, it did. It did. All right. So out of this group, uh, who would you say is your student of the week? Uh, I would say, oh, man, this was a tough one to think of student of the week. Um, I'll go with I'll I'll give it to Jen, I guess, mm-hmm. um, for kind of not going all in on the trashing Rishi train, you know, giving, you know, kind of not the benefit of the doubt, but let me hear you out. But also, you know, just also not buying his obvious bullshit. All right. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think this week, you're right. It was a little bit more difficult to come up with someone, but, um, I went with Debbie. Uh, you know, even though she certainly, you know, made things a little awkward, uh, you know, with her topic of conversation, her preferred topic of conversation, yeah. it was like, um, I thought that she was really warm and welcoming and, you know, just overall it was a pretty positive experience. And honestly, the other thing that I'm kind of impressed by Debbie is that even though she seems to be bothered by things, she doesn't get, like, visibly upset with Osama over it, you know? Mm. Like, you know a lot of these people, they would explode and this would be an argument. But, you know, she'll tell us in the interview, like, well, I don't see why I have to be the one to tell the parents. But when he tells her things, she's like, okay. Yeah. 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 All right. What about your dunce? Uh, I'm going to say Johan. Um, okay. Just that was a childish, childish yeah. little petty ass, petty, petty thing he pulled against something like, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes in relationships you have to put, if you're going to actually want to be with somebody, put dividers up. Yes, I'm upset that yesterday she asked me about this thing, but yeah. she's been working on this party for months. Yeah. And like, I shouldn't just crap all over that and give credit to other people for doing it it's just <laughs> yeah. petty and petty nonsense is all it right, is right right i went with chris um yeah you know it's like yeah you pretty much abandoned your wife and i yeah. get that there were reasons but also like we were saying those reasons are kind of like why didn't you plan ahead right yeah it's, i don't I mean, her planning was, I ran, I didn't know, I, I ran, she already, she ran out of narcolepsy medicine within like yeah. 
two weeks of being there. Okay, ran out of money. Let's plan ahead. You probably should have waited to move down there so until saying, you had I'm the money. In other ways of not planning, she right. already needed to leave back because she ran out of medication. They got married. They were supposed to get married, what, nine days after she got there? Yeah. And I think she was there for a month and she was like, oh, I'm out of medication. Like, right. Like, but you knew you were going. It's a whole It's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what about your life lesson? Um. So, I mean... <laughs> I guess it's important to make sure you take care of all your documentation when you take care oh of documentation. Gosh. That was mine, too. But I think mine can kind of go a couple different ways. Um, I said always look up the requirements for things. But I yeah, think that sure. kind of segues sure. into like another lesson is just make yourself a checklist, right? I feel like for yes, Jamie, too. Exactly. That's where I was going. That's where I was going. Checklist. checklist. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe people wouldn't forget things. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, what are all the addresses that when you move, what are all the things I have to change the address on, right? Right, right. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we will be back this time next week. It doesn't seem like our uh, tell-all is until May, you said. It's so in, we, yeah, not until May, so we so got, we got, a, got, couple, we got a couple more, more weeks of these. Yep, yeah. yep. All right, so until then. All right, see everybody then. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye.